This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. Okay, so we've got a bar reach in. It's at 59 degrees. Let's test to see if the thermostat is calling. It is, 34 degrees, two degree differential. And it sounds like it's low on charge, I can hear it. It's not iced up, so we'll jump up there and see what we can figure out on the roof. And it looks like we got another bar reaching. It's all controlled off the same thing. That's temping high too. All right, my unit's right here. Um, sight glass is flashing. Might be an oil leak right here. Kind of looks like it. So it might just be a flare or something. We'll have to see. We'll have to gauge up and uh, check for leaks real quick. All right, I turned off the entire rack and uh, I cleaned off all the joints with a towel really good. And we're just going to hit them real quick, starting from the bottom. I'm using the DTEC Select Leak Detector. Usually works really well. It usually picks up the leaks if they are there. So, potentially have a leak there. Let's check right here. Yeah, we're gonna hit it with some soap bubbles. See if that solves the problem. We'll go ahead and hit the other flare joints too, just to make sure there's no leaks at those. Um, big blue stuff. The important thing is to get a steady stream, okay? You don't want a bunch of bubbles. Be pretty liberal with it too. Let it drop down naturally to the bottom. And make sure you clean it up when you're done because this stuff uh, ends up uh, looking like a leak later if you don't clean it up. Yeah, we can easily see it right there. Cool. Let's see if uh, it's just a matter of tightening the flare nut, maybe. Okay. I just sprayed some more on there. Looks like we're nice and leak free now. Nice and leak free on the top. Let it sit on there for another 10 minutes or so just to make sure nothing else pops up. But I'm checking everything else. Not seeing anything down there. Not seeing anything up there looking good so we'll give it a few minutes and then uh, we'll top off the charge I'm hoping that's all that it is all right I uh, cleaned up all the soap bubbles made it all nice and shiny got into the threads and cleaned them real good and I'm gonna hit it with the electronic one more time as soon as it warms up just to verify that we fixed all the leaks um, I would like to get down to the evaporator coils too and do a leak check there but they've got a busy dining room it's Friday evening at about 3 o'clock or Friday afternoon about 3 o'clock in the afternoon and they've got a pretty busy bar, so I'm gonna not, uh, I'll probably end up following up, coming back another day. Let's see if we pick up anything else. This is where I had the leak before. And we'll just do a double check on all the other mechanical and flare fittings just to make sure no other leaks up here at least all right um, last thing I'm gonna do is open up that pressure control and then we're gonna top off the charge on this guy these pressure controls can leak right in here where the bellows is where they make their connection but I, usually you'll see oil signs in here but very common if you can't find a leak always go to that pressure control get right into that bellows okay I'm not seeing anything else right now. Um, I did get a visual on the other side of the condenser, don't see any issues. So we're gonna go ahead and gauge up. Now, the way that I did this was, I knew we were calling, 
so I shut the system off, okay? And when I did that, we had pressure on both sides of the lines because we were calling, okay? Uh, the, the solenoid valves downstairs are still open because there's no electrical connection, so the system actually equalized out. So we're probably gonna have 140, 150 PSI on both sides right now. So that's why I didn't gauge up yet because sometimes you gotta make the right decision, but sometimes it's best not to gauge up because there could be a leak at one of these caps or something and disturbing it could fix the leak and then you never know where it was. So that's why in a situation like this, I saw some oil, so I just went in and did a quick leak check before I started disturbing anything. All right, so I just opened up the gauges. These are closed right here. So these are the pressures in the low and the high side. So that's because the liquid line solenoid valve is open. Understanding the sequence of operation really help me to know you know to, to make this go a little bit easier okay so it's very important you understand how things work so we have 122 psi and 143 psi so we are ready to turn the system on i need to turn the pre-cooler on first and then we'll turn the condensing unit on and start turning everything else on too system is up and running sight glass is still flashing we're going to go ahead and uh, purge to there So I better purge these too, because I never purged these. Okay. And we're ready to charge it. So we're gonna just clear up that sight glass, being careful not to overcharge the system because it is under a heavy load right now. So we're gonna put some gas in it, let it run for a bit, then uh, wait till it gets a little bit closer to set point and then uh, clear it up. Almost there, just letting it slowly clear up. Um, and also, before I came up here, I always I just weighed that drum down at the truck and wrote the weight on it, so that way I know. I just I'm lazy and I don't want to bring my scale up if I don't have to, so just weigh it down there, leave the scale on the truck. So our sight glass just cleared up. We're gonna go ahead and uh, take the service gauges off and uh, go take a look at the evaporators down below. Also, I took a paint marker, which should last maybe through the summer. Uh, you know, a normal Sharpie wouldn't last at all, but a paint marker should last through the summer. And I marked what was in here. So bar coolers, walk-in cooler down here. This one's not in use. This one's the beer walk-in. This one's the cold rails. And this one's the walk-in freezer, just to help the next guy. Probably one of my guys, but you know or maybe even myself, sometimes I come here and I forget. Cause like today when I got here, I couldn't remember where the bar coolers was, so I opened up this panel first. So just little things like that that help you. Um, all right, we're going to uh, go ahead and fire everything else back up. So we could just do the one at a time. Just take a minute, count to about five or six, let the inrush calm down. Everything should start up because it's been off for a good 45 minutes. This one's not in use. And then we gotta physically make sure everything is turned back on. Get my hand on everything. So I hear the walk-in freezer running and I'll get my head in here and make sure everything else is running and we should have clear sight glasses also. I'm gonna do a quick sight walk too. I can tell from having my head in here, I know that this uh, evaporative cooler's running, but uh, I can see water running down the pads. That's a brand new cooler. I'm just gonna take a, a visual look at all the other equipment. This location's about an hour and a half away from my shop. So obviously if I can eliminate a service call on a Saturday, I'd love to do that. So I'll just go visually inspect all the equipment, see if I see anything crazy. All right. So it's just about down to temp. And like I said, we'll come in here and we check these coils. And this one's at 37, so looking good. Came back today and I'm gonna follow up on this guy. I just shut off the condensing unit. I'm gonna go downstairs and do a quick leak check on the evaporator coils. Um, no signs of oil. All the fittings are nice and dry. Looking good there. So we're gonna go do a leak check down at the evaporators real quick. All right, so I'm at the region and I shut the condensing unit off, but we have to make sure that the thermostat is calling. If the thermostat is calling, then the pressures will equalize out via the solenoid valve. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go over here, make sure that this thing is calling. So click on it. It's set for 34 with a two degree differential. It's calling. So at this point, the pressures have equalized out. I'll shut that one off. 
warm up the leak detector and hit this guy up and then we'll look at the other coils. I'm gonna do this very carefully. My expansion valve is right here, right where I'm putting the wand. If there was a leak, my leak detector would pick it up. See, I don't think there's any leaks. I just wanted to do my due diligence and make sure. I'm checking where the solenoid valve is right now. And then we're gonna hit the coils. Nothing here, nothing. So I'm gonna put it back together and attack the other coil. This is the worst when all the legends are missing and you're just looking at people's writing and stuff gets changed all the time. Trying to find a breaker it sucks, man. I hate panels like this, but this happens. These are, you gotta learn how to trace stuff down. You gotta be careful what you're flipping. Like this one says beer cooler. Let's flip it and see what happens. Be careful though, you don't wanna flip anything for like fryers or anything like that especially when the building's open you gotta be really careful so i'm gonna jump in there and see if that turns off power all right got power off so i'm gonna pop these coils real quick just do a quick leak check nothing crazy i really don't think there's any leaks in here because i just installed these coils but we'll see okay we're gonna sneak back in here going towards the bottom of the coil bottom okay we're gonna hit the bottom of the coil we're gonna hit the TXV. Nothing. We're gonna hit this other bottom of the coil. Nothing. Nothing there. We'll do the other one real quick. All right. Remember, refrigerant falls to the bottom. Check in the bottom. Nothing. Check the TXV. Nothing, no leaks. Cool, we're good. Forgive me, I am fighting the worst pinch nerve I've ever had in my life. It's like, it's been going on for a week now. I've seen all the doctors you could think of, but it started in my neck, went into my shoulders, went down to my elbow, now my fingers are numb. It's the weirdest thing in the world. And it, I, if, if you haven't ever had a pinch nerve like this, I swear to you, this is the worst pain I've ever felt in my life. Um, the doctors have given me like crazy medication, whatever. Anyways, long thing. So that's why I'm sitting kind of goofy and probably look silly, but eh, it is what it is. So, um, I, I skipped my last live stream because I was at super pain, but now I'm like medicated. So I might do my live stream tomorrow night. You guys might see it. You might not it just depends on how it goes. So, all right. So on this video, um, I had installed this equipment. I don't know a year maybe a year and a half ago or something like that. Uh, this video was actually shot, I think, back in, back in the early part of 2020 is when this was shot. Um, I'm going, like, I'm super slow at work, so I have all this extra footage that I never turned into videos, and that's what this stuff is. I'm just going through going, hey, I never made this, you know? So this was in the early part of the year, and you know it was early because I referenced their dining room being full of people. We haven't had dining rooms full of people in a long time. So anyways, um, so the equipment was fairly new. And when I went out there, I did some leak checking, uh, shortcuts. Okay. Or some tips that I do. So I saw signs of oil on the liquid line. And once I saw signs of oil on the liquid line, I decided that more than likely there was going to be a leak there. So I shut down the equipment and I leak checked the system without putting my service gauges on it because it was running when I got there. So the odds are that the pressure control was working. So that to me proved more than likely it had refrigerant in it. And also I could hear it uh, feeding vapor to the expansion valves downstairs. Okay. So I went ahead and shut the system down, did a leak check, found it. Okay. And then went ahead and put my gauges on it after to go ahead and top off the charge. Um, I like to do that whenever possible because it, it gives you the ability to leak check the places that you might inadvertently fix when you're putting your service gauges on there. If you guys have um, ever found a leak on a leaking Schrader or something like that, oftentimes if you have your service gauges on that spot, you're not going to find the leak anymore. So it's that kind of stuff. So when I can, in, in, in certain circumstances call for this, certain don't, okay? Obviously, you don't want to not put your gauges on something if it's completely flat and be looking for a leak forever and say there's nothing and then find out it doesn't have any gas in it because then you just wasted a crap load of time. Okay. Um, forgive me. This is like the most awkward position sitting here right now. It's killing me. Um, so that was a, uh, you know, 
went ahead and looked for the leak, found it, repaired it. It was actually just a flare nut. Okay, so I was able to torque that flare nut back down. Now, because I never opened the system to atmosphere, I did not feel the need to change the liquid line filter dryer. Okay, again, this is my system. I'm the only person that works on it. I felt confident that there was nothing wrong with the liquid line dryer. Now, if I had to open up the system to atmosphere, of course I would have changed the liquid line filter dryer. But in this situation, I didn't see the need to. Didn't see the need to charge the customer for a liquid line filter dryer. Um, just got it back up and running, okay? And I did get to come back out and just double check and then also leak check the evaporators down below too. I was pretty confident there wasn't going to be anything. But again, you can't just stop at the first leak you find. You need to do your due diligence and keep going when time permits, okay? Um, there's nothing worse than fixing a leak. You know, the customer's frustrated, you fix it, and then they have to call you back two days later. Okay, callbacks are not just a simple, oh, no big deal. No, callbacks are a huge thing, okay? When you have a callback, that's the customer losing faith in your services, okay? Let alone you potentially having a warranty issue, not charging the customer, that kind of stuff. So when possible, you want to reduce your callbacks tremendously, okay? All right. I really, really appreciate you guys making it to the end. Again, I apologize for my awkward sitting right here. I'm in extreme pain right now. Um, do me a favor. Check out my live streams Monday evenings, work and health permitting, okay? 5 p.m. Pacific and also uh, the HVAC Overtime channel. We go live on Friday evenings about 6 or 5 p.m. Just myself and my buddies hanging out, having a good time talking about the week, okay? Um, if you haven't already, please consider supporting the channel. It really does help me. Uh, by going to my website, hvacrvideos.com. And if you're interested, checking out the shirts, the hats, the beanies, the sweatshirts, all that different stuff, okay? It really, really helps to support the channel. So uh, also, uh, I have some affiliate links uh, or an affiliate link set up with truetechtools.com. If you're interested in purchasing any tools, use my affiliate link, Big Picture, one word, to save 8% on your order on checkout. And then I get a small commission of that. It doesn't cost you anything else or anything extra. So... Really, really appreciate you guys. Please uh, um, smash the thumbs up button, the thumbs down button, whatever. Just uh, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think, and we will catch you on the next one, okay?